The first stop for many child migrants to the United States is this Border Patrol facility in McAllen, Texas. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Rio Grande Valley Central Processing Center. It opened this summer in response to an influx of unaccompanied minors from Mexico and Central America. Do you think this is an immigration issue or a refugee issue? Do you think some of them will be granted political asylum? Well, it, I, the issue is very complex. I mean, we're not talking about, you know, criminals. You know, these are innocent children, you know, fleeing desperate times, you know, whether it's poverty, whether it's violence, um, you know, whether it's the draw of a better life in the United States. The Obama administration has made it clear most of the children will be deported. But they continue to arrive, twice as many as last year, and four times as many as in 2011. We've been riding along the border all week, and we're seeing some action in this area. We're not far away from the river and from Mexico. We see some border patrol vehicles over there and some people on the floor. We're going to go and check what's going on. Border Patrol has apprehended another group of undocumented immigrants from Central America. One by one, their names are taken. Their belongings bagged. In this group of 30, we counted about a dozen children, some of the tens of thousands who have come this year. Fault Lines investigates what's driving this migration boom, what children have left behind, and whether they'll be able to stay. Nearly 70,000 unaccompanied children have arrived in the U.S. from Mexico and Central America this year. But many more don't make it past the border. The children staying at this detention facility were all caught by Mexican immigration before they could make it across. One of them is 14-year-old Josue Jonas Ramirez. He's made the grueling 1,500-mile trip from El Salvador. That's only halfway to his mother, who paid a smuggler $4,000 to bring him to New York. It has been 10 years since they last saw each other. ¿Cómo fue para ti crecer con tu mamá tan lejos? Es difícil. Pero mi mamá nunca, nunca, nunca me había dado el dinero, mi mamá. Es buena onda, como le digo, con mi familia y con mi mamita. Josué told us that he had to leave El Salvador. It had become unsafe for him. No me contó. ¿Y cómo fue que, que, que lo mataron a tu papá? No sé, como él vendía dulce en los buses. Este, ya venía a trabajar y... Y tenía otra mujer, pues. Entonces, con la mujer que andaba, tenía problemas con las pandillas. A él lo mataron. Y a la mujer la dejaron en silla de ruedas, no se puede mover nada. After his dad was killed by gangs, a gang tried to recruit his older brother, who fled to the States. This year, Josué, who has been living with his uncle, began to run out of options. No, una vez, este, cuando yo iba a la escuela, me decían, metete, me decían que ahí te vamos a dar zapatos, ropa, me decían. Y nada, te va a faltar el bicho que te quiera pegar, los otros respondemos por favor. Me... No le dije yo. ¿Y te dejaron en paz? Me, mejor me importa andar sin jeans sin zapatos, pero yo no me meto, les dije yo. Este, me decían ellos, metete, me decían. No, le dije yo. Mi mamá me va a regañar, les dije yo. Y no me metí. 
pero me salí de la escuela porque tenía miedo que me metieran a la escuela. ¿Y así dejaste ir al colegio hace cuánto? Este un mes. Josué was just one of the thousands of Salvadoran children who have made the journey this year. Violence in El Salvador is rooted in structural historical causes, one of them being poverty, exclusion, marginalization of great portions of its population. Hector Silva is a Salvadoran journalist. He says gangs have sparked the most recent exodus of children. Uh, I think that now and for probably a decade or a decade and a half, they are the most violent and one of the most uh, influential components of the whole equation of violence, impunity, poverty, marginalization, inequity that has plagued these countries, my country and our countries for, for a long time. Si hablamos con tu hermano, ¿qué quieres que le digamos? ¿Por qué él te dijo que nos mandó un mensaje para vos diciendo que quería que estés ahí con él? ¿Vos qué le querés decir? Este, que cómo está. Este, que, que porte bien con mi mamá. Que le dirás a Dios que está él con mi mamá ya, pues. Me sale bien. San Salvador, El Salvador's capital, is where many migrant children, including Josué, have departed for the U.S. It's also where those who don't make it are returned. This bus arrived with a group of children who were detained en route to the U.S. For many of these families, it's been days and days of not knowing where their children were and what conditions they were, and now they just arrived, so there's lots of emotion here. It's a mix of sadness and happiness. The sadness is that they didn't make it to the United States, and the happiness is to know that they're alive and here. Ruth Gómez Rivera's 15-year-old son was on the bus. Hola, señor. No. He left the country a week ago, but was caught by Mexican authorities. Ruth's son is interviewed by immigration officials, fingerprinted, and released to the care of his mother. The family is reunited for now, but they can't go back home. They're scared it might be a death sentence for their son. It's been reported that about a third of the children deported back to El Salvador this year have faced death threats from gangs. His aunt says the family will have to go into hiding. Puedo decir seguros, porque aquí en este país no estamos seguros ni aún aquí donde estamos ahorita, le voy a saber decir. No estamos ni seguros, vea. Pero la verdad de las cosas es que trata la manera, no más, porque no los podemos llevar ahorita ya a casa. This is what they're afraid of. At San Salvador Central Morgue, officials say an average of 12 bodies arrive each day. Many of them are gang-related deaths, and many of them are young people. Un, un, una buena mayoría. Este caso, por ejemplo, no es un adolescente, pero es un menor de edad. Cuando encontramos fragmentos de pólvora o proyectil que están impresas o están enclavadas en el hueso donde está la lesión, podemos decir que se trata de un arma de fuego. For three years, the Orellana family has searched for their 16-year-old son. They just recovered his remains. The grandmother told us that he was killed by a gang. A DNA match was finally made, and today they're here to bury him.
the boy's mother lives in the United States and was trying to bring her son there. ¿Y tú usted piensa que lo, que lo trataron de agarrar pandillas o que...? No, el pandillero me tuvo que ver su... Porque qué más, y si eso no fue... Ellos pierden a cualquiera. Ahí varios se han perdido. The gangs, not the state, was setting the rules. You pay me or you die. That's a rule. Your children will be a part of my group or they will be ousted or killed. That's another rule. Your daughters will serve me or my group as sexual partners, or they will be ousted or killed. That's another rule. So those are the rules. The state doesn't have the capacity to overcome those rules in those communities. Two of these gangs formed in Los Angeles, where many refugees of the Salvadoran Civil War had settled. President Reagan addressed joint sessions of Congress in the 80s, saying that Central America was the last frontier, uh, that the communists were to come to America and the United States if the US didn't draw a line there. And guess what? Uh, they decided to draw a line in my country. While the US and eight South, Salvadorans fled north. We were ruled by violence, and as a society, we responded to that ruling with violence. It's because we have lived in this kind of environment. And yes, the US helped nurture, finance, and train those elites that made violence the only argument. Harsh deportation laws landed many gang members back in El Salvador in the 1990s, while the country rebuilt. The US has been and is an active part of the problem and hasn't been a part of the solution. And I would say even further that it's not just part of the problem, it's part of the whole phenomenon. But officials at the US Embassy told us they're funding violence prevention programs and training anti-gang police units in the country. On the outskirts of San Salvador, we went to meet leaders from the MS-13 and the Barrio 18 gangs. We ask these men why they think so many children are leaving now. Prácticamente la mayoría de los padres los mandan para evitar que ellos pertenezcan a las pandillas. Para evitar todo el sufrimiento que ya conocen de nosotros y para evitar una tragedia que el día de mañana los maten por andar involucrados en estas situaciones. What do you think the solution to the problem is? Nosotros ya la teníamos, nosotros la, la dimos a conocer mediante lo que es una tregua llamada en, ante los medios. Two years ago, the two gangs forged a truce and the homicide rate dropped. Pero lo que es el sistema de gobierno, el sistema judicial, no le da credibilidad a lo que nosotros tratamos de originar. Nosotros tratamos de salir adelante por otros medios, medios legales, Le hemos solicitado trabajo, le hemos solicitado ayuda financiera, no para armas, no para cometer delitos. Pero nadie opta por ayudarnos, no que por eliminarlos. The truth has become fragile, and gangs continue to fight for new territories and new members. Como un juramento cuando no más va a entrar que va a ser fiel a la pandilla y se va a olvidar uno hasta de la familia. Primero la pandilla, después la familia. Si vas a estar con Dios o vas a estar con el diablo, pues no se puede servir a dos seres al mismo tiempo. Pues. Entonces aquí o, o estás con los que estás en la calle o estás con, o estás con Dios. Pues. Lo, lo del mundo es del diablo y lo, lo demás es de Dios. How was it that the group became so strong? Uno por la, las armas que entraron, porque compraron armas de otros países. Otro por el tipo de, de entreno que uno tiene también. Las armas vienen de otros países también. Y de la misma, a veces de la misma policía. So you say you're stronger than the police and the army in this country? Sí. Si piensan que con tenerme preso me van a engendrar miedo, no es así. Los hemos adaptado a sufrir y a gozar. Los hemos adaptado 
a comer o a aguantar hambre. Prácticamente la calle los ha hecho sobrevivir a nosotros. What would you do if your son comes and tells you that he wants to be part of a, of a gang? En mi parte, yo no me gustaría que mi hijo viviera lo que yo he vivido. Pasado, he pasado muy malos ratos, malos momentos. Me ha tocado llorar la muerte de algunos que yo he apreciado demasiado. Y no me gustaría que él sintiera algo así. We've met many teenagers that said that they were forced to join the group. No, no es así. Es propio, es por propio de uno. No es obligación. Nosotros no obligamos a nadie. Ellos han llegado de nosotros. Si quieren, van a pertenecer. At this public school on the border between two gang territories, students say that's not the case. Porque por más los niños corren peligro, porque no hay edad para entrar a la pandilla. Puede ser de cualquier edad. Bueno, a mí me da miedo, o sea, porque por veces hay muchas dichas que, que se las roban y, le, y les dicen venite. Y cuando ya les hacen la viola y todo eso, después uno ni puede salir a la calle porque por el miedo que tiene. Y por eso a mí me da temor salir. Y me siento bien como, no sé, como que ellos me pueden hacer algo, así por eso. Hundreds of students have stopped coming to this school in the last year. Mataron a alguien cuando yo venía para la escuela. Y si yo no subo la casa de mi casa corriendo, quizás, quizás en el carro hasta yo hubiera logrado. Por lo mismo, pasa, matan a gente que no tiene nada que ver. Y sí, a veces me dan ganas de irme para estudiar en un lugar mejor. It's been a month since we met Josué in a Mexican detention facility. He's been deported back to El Salvador, and his uncle has come to pick him up. It's a four-hour drive to the countryside, back to the neighborhood he just fled. Josué's immediate family lives more than 3,000 miles away, near New York City. Last year, his mother, Luz, paid several thousand dollars to send for her oldest son, Daniel Roberto. <laughs> Unlike Josué, Daniel Roberto reached U.S. soil before being detained by Border Patrol. And from there, where did they send you? Where is the U.S. law protected him from immediate deportation. Instead, Daniel Roberto was released to his mother. Now he's fighting to stay. Venía yo de la de la de la escuela como ellos me mandaron a la escuela yo mi tío me mandaron allí y ahí estaba tenía que pasar una colonia una colonia donde estaba solo de Bueno, yo pasé allí, yo pasando con mi primo y mis dos hermanos que están allá. A ellos los persiguieron. A ellos no, a ellos me agarraron. Y ahí te agarraron y te pegaron. ¿Y eso te pasó solo una vez? Varias veces. Varias veces. Por ella no quise ir a la escuela. ¿Estás you afraid for Josué? No, mi familia. ¿Tienes miedo que lo traten de agarrar como te trataron de agarrar a vos? Sí. Y por, eh. ¿Por qué es que todos estos niños empezaron a venir de repente? ¿Tú sabes algo o hablaste con ellos? Es que ya están reclutando de allá de 15 para arriba. ¿De 15 para arriba? Sí. ¿Y todos se quieren escapar o qué? Los que no quieren. Sí, los que no quieren. Hay que allí andar allí con dar la vida regalada. Asylum is rarely granted to children fleeing gang violence. Daniel Roberto's mother, Luz, left her boys a decade ago. 
ellos se quedaron durmiendo porque yo salía a las 5 de la mañana. Se quedaron durmiendo, no vieron cuando yo me vine. Yo solo los abracé y los besé y me despedí y me vine. ¿Y fue muy difícil ese momento para vos? Sí, muy difícil porque yo le estaba dando de mamar a uno de ellos, al más pequeño, y fue muy difícil para mí. A lot of people would say that they find it difficult um, to understand why a mother would leave her children behind. What would you say to them? La gente que lo dice es porque ellos han vivido quizás bien o tienen sus cosas, por eso que lo dicen, pero si pasaran por lo que uno ha pasado, no estuvieran hablando lo que ellos hablan. Uno lo deja no porque uno quiere, sino que lo deja por necesidad. En El Salvador, Josué is back in the neighborhood where his brother fled gang recruitment and where his father was killed by gangs. His grandparents live next door but so do members from the MS-13 gang. He says there's the hammock right there that belongs to the gang members that they come and sleep here during the night. This is just right next to his home. The Salvadoran government is threatening to take Josue from his uncle if he's caught leaving the country again. When he arrived, you told him to stay inside the house because you were worried that he might be picked up by some gangs. Puede ser que sí, a donde quieran, digamos, a la fuerza lo quieran meter allí. Es que ahí no se sabe. Uno aquí está viviendo así, pues no se sabe lo que puede suceder el día de mañana y todo eso. You you told me a bit before that you were not going to go to school. Why is that? Es que yo quiero ir al colegio, pero está hay muchos madreros y cuando va para la escuela después le piden dinero y no le da. Comienza a ir cuadra a uno. And you think that Josué can be in the same type of danger? Pues sí, este pienso yo que pueden hacer, digamos, como me imagino yo que por por venganza del otro quieran a este. Eso es lo que yo digo, nomás pienso, pues. Sí. Sí, como del que me encanta del hermano, pueden agarrar a este. You're going to be 15 this November. Are you afraid of what will happen then? Sí. Above all, implications, origins, considerations about whether they're gang members or not, whether they're really fleeing violence or not. Above all, they're kids. They are children. You know, they're vulnerable. So my take would be, yes, these are refugees. As long as the causes down there in Central America are the same, and they are the same, and I don't see any public policy addressing those, and the US doesn't have the important, meaningful conversation about how it is going to treat the immigration problem, the conditions are there. The road is open.